Hey everyone, Toy Chips here from Jupiter Shoes. This is Workshop Live. Today we are dealing with an E18 foot type. Check out the quadricep foot typing system for more information. E18 foot type, nice neutral heel, medium, medium low arch. A lot of flexibility in that forefoot. Not crazy amount, but a fair amount of a forefoot varus. Probably somewhere in the 6 to 12, maybe a little bit more uh, degree cock to the outside. So, uh, we're going to take the top down here. Uh, we have a customer, she's had three sets of custom orthotics, two at the um, standard insert thickness, and then um, one at the thin insert thickness. With these, um, she's had them for uh, about a year and a half, two years now, and we were doing okay. Uh, we had a standard SR Poron met pad, so something like this. It's a quarter inch thick, it's nice, it's squishy does compress. Um, we had that on there. We also were using a uh, sponge uh, cork rubber combination, cushion cork, which we use a lot, as a met pad too. And they had been doing okay, but she really wasn't getting that full all day comfort. So we sat down, we talked about things. Uh, there was a few additions that we were dealing with. She was felt like she was compensating by supinating, not abducting or turning to the outside, but supinating where she was just cocking her feet out. Um, an E18 foot type doesn't need a ton of medial support on the inside of the foot. So we're gonna work with a little bit different shape, a metatarsal pad and an arch bar. So we're gonna work with adding this. Um, this is a modification that we like using a lot here at the shop. It combines longitudinal arch support and metatarsal support. Uh, we're using eighth inch cushion cork and um, we're also going to be doing a little extra lateral support. I, I often, when we deal with over supination and things like that, um, we like our little cuboid or lateral arch bar. So hitting that spot, you look at the contour of this insert. She doesn't have a super high arch. So when we look at the shape of this orthotic, um, there's, you know, you want to pick and choose where we're hidden. So we're going to do extra longitudinal support. We're going to do a little bit of a lateral cuboid bar. Uh, when we do this, depending on foot size, we can go anywhere from a quarter inch up to quarter inch up to a full inch depending on how big the foot is and in this case this lovely customer has a, a nice small dainty foot so we're gonna go with three-eighths of an inch of for width on the cuboid bar now um, we've got three sets of inserts we're working with all right now you know, fun part about this job is that it's a little bit arts and crafts. My lovely wife is a art teacher. Yeah, I, I learn a lot. And um, I've been doing this my whole life. So a lot of modifications when we're, when we're dealing with this kind of stuff. It's, it's a creative process in the fact that you're sitting down, you're listening to people's problems. You look at what kind of mechanics you're dealing with with the foot. You have a high arch, you got a medium arch, you got a low arch, really flat foot. And um, just understanding the mechanics, understanding the pain, and then thinking about from a solution standpoint, how you can remedy that. And it's, it's not all about just thinking about the insert. You really want to think about, okay, footwear holistically includes the insert inside of it. So you really got to consider, okay, what are you doing with the foot? Now, you know, in this trade, in this practice, oftentimes we get into situations where people have to wear dress shoes all day long. People have to... Um, wear certain items and we always have to be responsive and helpful in as best of ways we can to keep people comfortable but also you know keep people working in their jobs and everything else so um, what we got today is we're doing 
the metatarsal pad plus the arch bar combo. We're going to do this. We're going to do the cuboid bar. And then we were also having some issues with um, the fifth met. She was getting a lot of callusing and pressure. And we're going to do a little cutout both left and right um, and give it a little extra cushion with some SR Poron in there. Uh, SR Poron is a very spongy material. Uh, it's often this color or like a maroon colorway. And SR Poron, it's never abraded at all, so you usually have to scuff it up a little bit on one side. Um, but SR Poron is a material that is uh, very spongy, kind of like a memory foam mattress or a pillow. And we like using it a lot for offloading certain areas. So um, again, to review, E18 foot type, uh, about two year old inserts. We're retuning them. She had some new issues that she was dealing with that we are considering with this modification profile. All right. So in this process, for any of you people looking at pedorthics as a career or anybody doing apprenticeship work, um, or uh, for any medical professionals looking to get some new ideas on modifications and help feed out. Um, biggest thing about this is you want to limit the amount of steps as much as possible, all right? So typically, as long as if you can get things done in a one-step process, that's usually the best way to go about things. And when we help feed out, um, these types of modifications we usually do on the spot. We did take this one in because it's a little bit more time consuming. We have three sets of inserts. All right, so arch bar, met pad, cuboid bar, all identified on the inserts. We have everything cut over here. We're gonna get the glue on the mod pieces. Um, and then we are going to get a little fancy with this. We're gonna do a fifth met cutout. And I'm gonna take our Dremel that we have right over here. We're gonna do a little cutout just on the fifth metatarsal. Nothing crazy, but try to offload that as much as possible. She's had this pesky callus that's been building up. Um, the fat padding is kind of depreciated and the body, you know, when you build a callus, you protect yourself. If you have regular callusing, heel cracks, you got that Birkenstock heel when you're wearing Birks, it's winter time, dry outside, you naturally have a lot of cracks on your heel and then you're wearing your Birk EVAs and your heel starts cracking like crazy because of the cupping of the Birkenstocks. They centralize that fat padding, but you can get cracks. I get it all the time. So anybody that's dealing with that stuff, we highly recommend Brown's Foot Bath. Um, Brown's Foot Bath is an awesome product, uh, separate company, but we own it cheap at a laboratory. Now, all right, so we got, still have to glue the, the orthotic, but we're gonna do a fifth met cutout. So where that sits, the purple one is the most worn. Okay, so this area right here, we're going to trim out. And I'm gonna keep that uniform. And when we're doing this, um, it's 
to be the best, you really got to make sure you're getting everything lined up properly. Sometimes you can eyeball it. I mostly measure. All right. So we love using Dremels. Um, anytime you're using a Dremel, highly recommend, highly recommend using Dremels in-house sanding drums. They work a million times better than that cheap stuff you can get at Amazon. All right. So when we're doing this, we're going to follow our lines. And what we're doing is we're going down to the top EVA layer. Now oftentimes, when we're doing this, we're gonna get into the core support piece. So if you see that, we are offloading a little bit more on that, whenever we're doing the fifth met, we are getting into the core support piece. So um, it does have a little bit of a drop off. Whenever you're doing a cutout mod like this, you can consider it a drill and fill. Um, most of the time, a drill and fill is usually going to use a silicone material to help that out. But in this case, we're just going to use SR Poron, which is nice and spongy. We do have Poron here. This is a, like a sport Poron, this light blue material that we have right here. Um, I use that in almost every single one of my custom work products. And, um, Sport Poron is great, but it's firm and bouncy versus SR Poron, which has a much lower density, so it's more pillowy. So they cut out right there, and yeah, we just got we're gonna work around that that met bar, and so this will be a two-step. We're gonna get everything glued up, but we're just gonna put on the um, metatarsal arch bar and the cuboid bar first. And then the last step we'll do is we'll get that um, fifth met cutout done. Especially when you're getting into some of the core materials because they're firmer, you want to make sure you paper the edges nicely. Yeah. Done. And again, when we do this kind of stuff, it's usually customers are here. In this case, because we have three, we ask the customer to leave them so we can get them done. It is a busy little morning. Um, we have a very nice shop. If anybody hasn't been to Chia Pitta Shoes, we would love to have you come in. We got a ton of great products, athletic, casual, dress, cover all the bases. New company we brought in is Teva or Teva. Really excited about them. Uh, a little bit younger, high school kiddos, college kiddos, but uh, they're, they're actually, for what they are, the $50 sandals, they're nice. Um, 50 to 70 on average. We're bringing in UGG for this fall time. Very excited about that. So, you know, we are an orthopedic shop, but we got a ton of great companies that we deal business, do business with. And uh, we'd love to have you come in. So, um, for anybody that has shopped with us, it is pretty much spring, summer season. We have our full complement of shoes in stock. So we'd love for you guys to come in. Um, I'm sure we've announced it multiple times, but uh, for anybody that does shop with us, we have this awesome loyalty program, and it is uh, essentially a 5% kickback. Spend 500, you get 25 back. There are additional ways to make, to get more points, where if you leave a review on a product you purchase, um, you can get an extra bonus points. You, if you log into our website, you get extra bonus points. Um, if you refer friends, you can get bonus points too. That's super cool as well. So uh, make sure you check that out when you come into our shop or go online. 
Um, got a great little program. And it is an omni-channel loyalty program and the idea that um, the omni-channel aspect is something that if you earn a reward, you can use it online or in store. And the big deal with that, we've been working on that for a long time, really excited about that, is you can see your purchase history on our website. Everything looks really cool and good. So yeah, we'd love for you. We're, we're working on our website. We started with a new marketing agency, so we're gonna be doing a lot more online, working that angle, because nowadays with how business works, you gotta be able to do everything, so. All right, perfecto. Let me open that up a little bit more. So when you're doing Dremel work, this is always exciting, but um, it comes out of steady hands. All right, so take your top down again. Got this. All right, we're gonna get our glue on here. All right. So modifications like this are a normal part of business. When you're making a custom orthotic, when you're going out, when you compare our process and our product to anybody else, literally nobody does it this way. We don't charge for modifications or adjustments. It is an awesome process where we've realized over doing this, um, since the early 80s with my pops, this, this methodology that we currently use. You can never say you've seen everything. When you look at feet, there's lots of different things that can happen. And when we assess a foot, we want to understand, okay, what are the mechanics? What are we dealing with? Um, what are the pain profiles? Why is something happening? And then from there, we come up with the right recipes and materials. We can go soft, we can go firm. We don't like plastics all that much. Typically, um, we'll use corks and rubbers and foams, some thermoplastics, but we'll use traditional doctor style plastics somewhere between five to 10% of the time. And I don't dislike them, but we like, the, the problem with plastics often is that they're too rigid and they're too stiff. And when you're making an insert, it has to be a complementary part of, an or, of, of footwear in total. So you want everything to work together nicely. And in some cases, depending on the foot type and the problem that you're dealing with, you have to go super rigid. But in most cases, we can get combinations of materials that are softer, flexible, and they just, they work much better in these situations. All right, we got glue on the modifications. We're still gonna have to do the cutout right here, which we're gonna do right now. Um, we're gonna let this dry for a sec, but we're gonna get our shape down. All right. So, uh, this material, SR Porin, really easy to use. We like it a lot. Um, problem with it is that it is never abraded so you really want to make sure when you whenever you whenever you do use this material you got to take it to the grinder and just lightly sand it so it glues down much better um, if you don't do that it's it'll most likely delaminate super easily so uh, again little little things that being the best you learn over the years all right. So, yes. Perfecto. And the glue dry time is usually about two to five minutes depending on how sloppy you got with it. You wanna make sure it's dry, because if you don't, it won't impregnate into the material as well as it should. Perfect. All right. So, 
got these nice materials here. Got our cutouts. We're gonna get these glued up next. And then, the first round of modifications applied. I'm gonna take it to the grinder. Get those tapered up a little bit, get this on, and then we'll be set for today. So thank you guys very much for tuning into this Workshop Live. We have two viewers right now. Cool thing about this is that with doing this, we're recording it, it works great. We have three people uh, three employees that are apprentices for our Pinarthic program. We have Tyler Nitsch, we got Laura Sebastian, and Scotty St. Cyr. Um, and doing this kind of stuff, a lot of it comes down to experience, trying different things out, seeing what works, what doesn't, knowing you know what kind of shape and um, where to place it, all little things that you learn over the years but you know with our shop we got a lot of time doing this and if i can cut down the experiments and get get as many feet happy as possible with more of my salespeople doing this work the better all right so i'm going to shift this over here and um cushion cork this material it it's it's not heat moldable um so it's a open cell rubber is an open cell typically open cell um it does wrap around the edges okay but it can crack a little bit so i typically will use more closed cell materials if i'm doing a wrap so multi-cork is a closed cell form and co cork combination that's this stuff this is um more of a rubber cork compound which works great for flat modifications. All right, so start here. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. All right, that mod right there. One down, five to go. Take these with a mallet, flatten that out a little bit. Row two. Getting that heated up nice and nice. Second orthotic. And wrap that up real well. All right, we're back. Fredo had to pop in here real quick, but we're gonna take it back. We got the last one going down, and I'm gonna take it over to the grinder in a sec. Perfecto. Perfecto. Yeah, so anyways, I was saying, uh, we are recording these. They're gonna work out. They, uh, we're using a couple of different AI apps to 
clip these up really nicely and um, help us write some uh, SEO content. So, all right, we're gonna take you over here to the grinder real quick. Two seconds. All right. Almost ready to go to the grinder. All right. So we're just tapering the edges, cleaning things up. Halfway done. Go, Pops. Squish. You want to be on the camera? All right. Got Pops here. He's working on something else. <laughs> um, but we've got nice cutout. Last thing we're doing is going to add the pour-on cutout right there. So we're going to be gluing the rest of this. This is my stuff. Fredo's working on something, too. All right. Yo, yo, yo. That is Fredo. Um, with 
this little cutout. The idea is to make it the same thickness technically, or could it even be a little bit thicker than what the standard setup is, but uh, we're using a much softer, lower density combination of materials. So um, with this, the idea, if it's a lot softer, the fifth metatarsal is going to be able to depress down a little bit more naturally so there's less pressure in that area. So you're creating a depression zone when you're doing something like this. So that's the idea. It usually works. We never say we know everything. So, all right. Big thing that's happened in the last couple of uh, weeks. The Good Feet store recently just opened up right down the block from us here in Kenosha. And, you know, I got nothing against them as a business. Um, they are who they are, but they are competition. And when we look at the differences from the Good Feet store to Chia Petty Shoes, few big things that anybody that's considering custom orthotics should run out of that store and come right over to here. When we make a custom, 100% of what we do is done in-house. We do it right on those machines right there. Those are compression molding machines. We use that oven, heat up the materials, and compression mold each layer, layer by layer. Now, before we get there, we make a mold of a foot. This is handmade, number one, molding plaster. We make a copy of your foot. This is good for up to 10 years, short of major weight gain, reconstructive surgery, or injury. Now, when we're making a mold, we spend a lot of time, it's about 50 to 60 minutes on that stuff. And when we make a mold, um, it can last a long time, we can use it in the future. When we make an orthotic, it's 450 bucks. $100 for the plaster mold, 350 for the pair of inserts. From what I've been told, the Good Feet store is more than $2,400. Now they give you three pairs of semi-custom inserts, but it's not actually custom, it's all over the counter product. This is handmade for your foot. We do modifications like this stuff that if you have a problem, we're here to help. We don't charge for modifications. We guarantee ours for three years, build them to last five to seven. We're gonna go on a lot about that in the future, but we're gonna get this project done now here. So um, we've got Met Bar, longitudinal arch bar. So we are hitting the middle of the foot. We have a cuboid bar on the outside of the foot to keep the foot from supinating too much. We have an E18 foot type. Nice neutral heel, medium four foot varus. So we're in the 12, six to 12 degree cock to the outside. Maybe a little bit more, maybe about 15 degrees. And um, when we have e, e foot types, E18 foot type, it's relatively, it looks like a good normal foot. There's nothing that's glaring about that kind of situation. Um, but there's a fair amount of mobility within the, the midfoot area. So you really want to make sure you're stabilizing everything. Um, when you combine a medium forefoot varus or a large forefoot varus with problems with the rear foot, uh, that's when you have a lot of metatarsal issues. E18 foot types are usually still pretty much right down the middle for normal feet. Um, so we got this little mod piece. I usually go over around the edges so we're covering more than just the cutout and then we taper it down real nice. All right. Perfecto. Okay. Almost done here. So we're gonna get these Last step is gonna be taking this to the grinder, smoothing the edges out. We'll look at it in a second, and then we'll be done. So, um, I'm gonna take this over to the grinder in two seconds. these to the grinder.
This is quick. This. Is a wrap. Freedom. Uh, we have metatarsal bar, longitudinal arch bar, lateral cuboid bar, and a fifth met cutout. Nice SR4 run right there. Cushion cork, multi cork right on the outside. Nice setup. E18 foot type. Make her happy. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Chiapetashoes.com. Two P's, two T's. And what do we say, Fredo? Ain't no better than Chia Pera. Hey, that's a wrap.